Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick to the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 5 to the power of x is equal to 50. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 5 to the power of x is equal to log 50. Now, an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front of the logarithm. So this would equal b times log a. So now log 5 to the power of x, I can move the exponent x to the front. So now I get x times log 5 is equal to log 50. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by log 5. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to log 50 over log 5. Now log 50, this is the same thing as log 10 times 5. Now I have this over log 5. And now if I have something in the form log a times b, this is actually equal to log a plus log b. So this is actually how you add logarithms. You simply just multiply the two bases. So in, this, in the case of log 10 times 5, that's going to equal log 10 plus log 5. Log 10 is actually equal to 1. So now I have 1 plus log 5 over log 5. Now log 5, that's actually equal to 0 0.699. So now I have x is equal to 1 plus 0 0.699 over 0 0.699. Now 1 plus 0 0.699, that's actually equal to 1.699. So now I have 1.699 over 0 0.699. And if you actually end up dividing these two using a calculator, you get that x is equal to 2.43. So that is our answer. All right, so I have 2 to the power of 49 times 50 to the power of 50. Now, first off, our exponent 50 here, this is the same thing as 49 plus 1. So now I'm going to rewrite this exponent as 49 plus 1. So now I have 2 to the power of 49 times 50 to the power of 49 plus 1. Now, I'm going to be using an important property of exponents that states that if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, I have 50 to the power of 49 plus 1. So we can think of a as 50, m as 49, and n as 1. So this will get me 2 to the power of 49 times a to the power of m. So 50 to the power of 49 times a to the power of n. So 50 to the power of 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of b times c to the power of b, this is the same thing as a times c to the power of b. So in this case, I have 2 to the power of 49 times 50 to the power of 49. Because both their x and are the same, I can simply multiply their two bases and keep the exponent. So 2 times 50, that's going to be 100. So now I have 100 to the power of 49 times 50 to the power of 1. Now 100, this is the same thing as 10 squared. 
So now I can replace 100 with 10 squared. And I get 10 squared to the power of 49 times 50. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So 10 to the power of 2 to the power of 49, that's going to equal 10 to the power of 2 times 49. Now I have this times 50. Now 2 times 49, that's going to equal 98. So now I have 10 to the power of 98 times 50. Now, although we've pretty much simplified this as much as we can, we can always just simplify more by simplifying this 50. So 50 here, this is the same thing as 10 times 5. So now I have 10 to the power of 98 times 10 times 5. Now, if you notice, 10 to the power of 98 and 10 both of these two have the same bases. And if two terms have the same bases, then you can always multiply them. So I can say a to the power of m times a to the power of n. This is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So in this case, 10 here, this is the same thing as 10 to the power of 1. So now, remember, if I'm multiplying these two, I keep the two bases the same, and I simply add the two exponents. 98 plus 1, that's going to be 99. So I have 10 to the power of 99 times 5. So this is going to be my answer. And if you're wondering how big of a number this is going to be, this is actually going to be 5 followed with 99 zeros. So it's going to be 5 with... 0, 0, 0, 0, and on and on and on. So that is our answer. All right, so I have 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 1. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start by factoring out 3 to the power of x from my left-hand side. So now I have 3 to the power of x times, or well, 3 to the power of x divided by 3 to the power of x is 1. So I have 3 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 plus 1. And this is equal to 1. Now if I simplify this in the parentheses, which is 3, I get 3 to the power of x times 3 is equal to 1. Now from here, I actually have two different methods to solving this problem. So for method 1, Start with 3 to the power of x times 3 is equal to 1. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with 3 to the power of x is equal to 1 over 3. Now, if I have something in the form 1 over a to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of negative n. So in this case, this is the same thing as 1 over 3. 3 to the power of 1. So I can now rewrite this as 3 to the power of negative 1. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x is equal to negative 1. Now for method 2, again, we start with 3 to the power of x times 3 is equal to 1. And this time, instead of dividing 3 on both sides, I'm actually going to multiply 3 with 3 to the power of x. So 3 here, this is the same thing as 3 to the power of 1. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m plus n. So 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 1, that's going to equal 3 to the power of x plus 1, which is equal to 1. Now 1 here, we can rewrite this as 3 to the power of 0, because anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So now if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now to solve this, all I have to do is subtract 1 on both sides. These two cancel out. Off with x is equal to negative 1. 
So this is my answer. Now to check, I start with 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 1. Now if I substitute in negative 1, I get 3 to the power of negative 1 plus 3 to the power of negative 1 plus 3 to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1. Now 3 to the power of negative 1, if I have something in form a to the power of negative n, this is the same thing as 1 over a to the power of n. So 3 to the power of negative 1 is the same thing as 1 over 3 to the power of 1. Three to the power of one is the same thing as three, so I have one over three plus one over three plus one over three is equal to one. Now, if I factor out one over three from this, I get one over three times one plus one plus one is equal to one. Now, if I simplify this in the parentheses, I get one over three times three is equal to one. So then, now these two cancel out, and I'm left with one is equal to one. And because this is true, our solution is true as well.